I kind of just uh, thought that look, it's a three-letter subject, right? And uh, it's very close to most people's heart. Uh, and people have been pretty, you know, engrossed in these days with uh, this thing on the left called Wordle. And if you figured what that E is, and it's in the green, so you know that the E is in the right place, uh, and uh, is what I'm talking about. So. Everybody started today's meeting with this whole thing about this uh, superheated phase in our, uh, you know, existence. And what people are thinking is that probably if it's going to be 45, 46 in April, maybe hit 50 in May and floods in June, what is all this happening around us? And are we meant to just uh, hang loose and uh, bear it all? Or what should we be doing? So yes, the whole thing that... Uh, the first E on today's subject is about being very, very environmental conscious and understanding what's happening and doing what we can. So basically, the first thing that we say to each other, to entrepreneurs, to individuals, to anybody, is that have this particular environmental component in your work, in your company, in your life. And it's all about taking actions on how to mitigate the climate change in your, in your ways and practices and policies, being compliant, being aware that uh, what you do may be leading to greenhouse gas, toxic emissions, hazardous waste, which you need to control. There is a carbon footprint and a carbon intensity that your business may be contributing to. Can you do something about it carefully? What are you doing about water usage and conservation? Uh, we are lucky in India, we get a deluge every, uh, you know, June, July, and uh, then uh, we all forget about that uh, abundance of water for the rest of the year and start uh, wringing our hands uh, when things go wrong. There's aspect of the, in your supply chains, you may be having devegetation, afforestation, and overfishing going on, energy, renewable energy usage is a very important aspect to keep in mind. Waste management and recycling, understand what happens to the society and, and your city when you're doing your business. And then, of course, leading up to green products, technologies, and infrastructure. Now, what I've said over here are subjects which are put in a certain uh, line of priority. And I think that every uh, hard-thinking individual needs to keep that in mind. All right? Don't be unaware about these aspects. Try to learn a little more. And then we'll tell you how you can bring it into your business. Well, yes, the second uh, uh, letter is an S, but it's in the right place. And we are talking about something where we see all around us. Income inequality, we see the gender gap wherever we go. We feel very hurt about things, and yet uh, we wonder how we can solve those things. There is a very, very poor health care access uh, you know, issue here. 80% of India's population doesn't get a right to uh, to the cures that are available. And then there is the race gap all over the world and we all face it in some form or the other. So yes, S is for social. And what is it that we as entrepreneurs are doing really immeasurably about the social aspect of our business? And that is what is about our employees, our customers, consumers, suppliers, and the local community. So what I say here is, that the first thing that you have to have in mind is a very clear vision and value uh, statement, which is to attain a higher purpose, which is, you know, not crazily out of, uh, out of sync with your capacities, but it should be pushing you in a direction which has a positive social impact. You have to begin by starting with who is your greatest resource, and that is your employee. And therefore, how do you you know, everybody has got a profit imperative. Everybody has got a return on investment to be sorted. You've got to look after your stomach first. Well, at the same time, just figure out what is it that needs to be done so that there's a dignity and a proper opportunity given to the people who work for you. How, how much investment have you done on safety and the you know, eradication of toxicity that happens? Uh, the issues that we keep reading in the newspapers about don't become part of that uh, uh, you know, story that we keep hearing. 
look at aspects of equality and diversity, which transcend race and religion. Some of you are very powerful, going to be powerful. You're like young and embarking on tremendous entrepreneurial journeys. So become aware of how these issues are and how companies implement them uh, without doing it as an also ran. Uh, do it proactively rather than just because there's a compliance and a good thing to do. Importantly, ethical supply chain. Uh, avoid deflection. What I keep seeing is even the largest of companies I've worked with, they first create the problem out of their, you know, entre, you know innovations, etc., to bring things at a cheap cost quickly, and then leave the problem for somebody else to solve, particularly like plastic waste, or for that matter, the way in which they do their logistics, etc., or even how they source their materials. So just be careful that you don't end up passing down your compliances. Don't have a CA solve your problem. Please be first solving it uh, and get a CA just to confirm it's all right. That kind of a situation is how I see this uh, socially aware entrepreneurial thought process. There's a customer service performance, community welfare and consumer protection. Be conscious of those things. Yes, some of us are at early stages of business, uh, very hard put to solve our uh, operational issues. But we need to be constantly looking at how well do we integrate with what's happening around us. And therefore, uh, becoming part of that uh, effort, and especially for social justice. And the last one here uh, is governance. That's actually at the end, uh, the main thing that my message for this morning is going to be, that how do we, uh, as humans, uh, take care about proper governance? So people may recollect this particular statement they called don't be evil. Some of you will get that uh, click immediately that it was, uh, well, I'm not gonna have interaction. So it's, it's about what Google and its founders first wrote for themselves. That look, we've got a certain capacity to do things, but one of the things we have to be very clear is that wittingly or unwittingly, we don't do something that's evil. Evil means something that's not beneficial for somebody else. So we have to make it our business to be good. And here, essentially, it's all about, you know, making sure that we have checks and balances, transparency, that there are people who call us out when we unwittingly do something, when we are passionate about our business and we have to do a, a, a you know, they get going with certain aspects. You have to make tough choices. I, as simple as a thing that I work in a company long time ago, which believed that you can't bribe. And, a lot of work would get stuck, projects would get stuck, people would lose their uh, you know, promotions, but that's it, you can't get your work done. There's one fellow who would stop your work. Well, that's the way that system worked and today it's one of the most valuable organizations in the country. Anyway, uh, you have to make sure that there are these aspects where you consciously choose diversity at the leadership level, make sure that there are no conflicts of interest. Don't think that what society has given you an opportunity to do gives you a right to leverage just without a thought. You have to make sure that, yes, there is a self-interest, but let it not be to an extreme. There has to be a positive self-interest in what we do. So here are basically the, the aspects of ESG as an awareness, but what is important is that last line, we must voluntarily adhere as uh, people to look at sustainability reporting as a framework, as something that helps us understand what we do and it starts us on a journey of compliances and happy businesses. So let me inform you uh, as a uh, upcoming, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, entrepreneurs with huge success in the horizon that the uh, government has already taken steps to uh, allow companies to embark on this journey of sustainability and Essentially, what it's done is it says that, okay, certain type of largest companies which have got access to infrastructure and rights of operation uh, and are listed, they have to now start reporting on a certain basis from financial year 22, 23, as we speak. And what they've recommended is that everybody look at <clears throat> a lighter version of that, and which is for all other entities, including limited liability you know, uh, partnerships. So it's a highly uh, recommended thing. Now, why do we say this is all happening? 
it's basically this that there is this whole new aspect of impact investing there's capital that you want a lot of people not just woke people but basically good money is chasing into uh, uh, you know good businesses and good businesses that want to become great and sustainability as an overall concept through this framework of esg is uh, uh, attracting a lot of set that money and in these last two years pandemic years there are statistics to show that companies that had a higher rating in their sustainability practices are valued better give better return to their shareholders and stakeholders and they have access to capital uh, and a more patient capital uh, and therefore that's where it goes uh, in case you have any interest you should be contacting somebody who's you know who knows how to hold your hand through it and of course uh, for reciprocity members the the the, the ideas will be uh, the support will be free as in so far as connecting with me now i picked up this subject uh, from two places one is an irisbusiness.com where i figured it and there's the motley fool a very interesting pod, uh, podcast set so with that thank you very much uh, sorry in case i have overstepped the 5 minute limit but this is what i thought would be useful for today thank you